Cooper Mulligan, Scry. Going to consult the handle, see where the top card does go. Hey, I'll leave it on top. All right, it's showtime, folks. William Hawk will be on the play. Where's he going to start? It's a mountain. It's a rift bolt on suspend. Over to Blanchard will go. Vexing Devil here in Wesley's hand. William Hawk does not have that one-drop creature very often, but he still keeps winning. Yeah. It's an experiment one to start. Blanchard going to go down to 18. Here's Rift Bolt going upstairs. Was curious to see if maybe he'd go towards creatures or not. Yeah, I mean, it might be worth hitting the first creature to just slow down the zoo deck. Then number two is an Arid Mesa. But William is not interested. Sacred Foundry, Blanchard already down to 13. Yeah, Wesley kind of doing the work for him at this point. There's a Wild Nacoddle. And now here's a Vexing Devil. Yeah, that, we'll see if that resolves. This is what he was talking about with Vexing Devil, too. Because that thing is big. Looks like the trigger is on the stack. We might have a Searing Blood here. No Searing Bloods, only Blazes. Or Searing but, Blazes. Yeah, but you, you still might want to take out the Experiment one before it gets that other counter and it can regenerate itself. If there's Searing Blaze, he is going to take care of Experiment 1. Now I'm curious to see what he's going to do about the Vexing Devil, if anything. Does he pay the 4 life? No, yeah, because it, the Vexing Devil is good for 4 life next turn, at okay. the very least. You know, it's, it's going to get into combat, and then if the game goes longer than that, if he gets more attack setups with that Vexing Devil, maybe it was better to pay the 4 life off the bat. But William's not interested. He thinks the game is going to end before then. Or... Oh, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's that. There's a Searing Blaze with Landfall, so... See you later, Vexing Devil. Don't need to pay anything. Thank you much. How about you take three? Yeah. How's that sound? Well, well, Nicole, are you ready? I'm gonna need you. <laughs> it's you and me out here. You got some work to do. <laughs> well, actually, a couple cards left. Remember, he did mulligan to five this game. You can see the, the draws this deck is capable of, though. Here's an attacker three. Hawk is gonna fall down to 16. What did Foothills, Tarmogoyf? couple of different spells down there. We got Creature Sorcery, Land, and Instant. So it's going to be a 4 or 5 Goyf. Arid Mesa is going to be sacrificed here by Hawk. There's Sacred Foundry. Is it weird that watching the Tron deck and watching William Hawk play Burn, it kind of makes me want to play those decks. No, not really. This happens to me a lot. Like, yeah. when I was watching Danny <laughs> Jessup play Grixis Control, I was like, ah, oh, that deck looks awesome. Yeah. And then I just snapped out of it because I would never do that. <laughs> it's all part of doing coverage, man. Sometimes these decks look really interesting, especially when someone really knows how to pilot their deck. Yeah, and I mean, we're watching the players that are winning, right? So it's like, pretty clearly, their decks are going to look good. Yeah. An attack there for seven is going to put a hawk down to eight. The follow-up is another wild Nacoddle. Blanchard can present lethal next turn. Here's a Boros charm going upstairs. Blanchard's going to fall down to three. What's he saying? You got one more for me? And I think William Hawk does. It's a Rift Bolt. Got to be hard cast going upstairs. That's going to do it. William Hawk's going to win game number one here over Wesley Blanchard. Burn up a game over a zoo. Being on the play is very powerful stuff, as is Searing Blaze. That's why Hawk is up one. So, let's take a look at the sideboards here for each player. Very quickly, we will start Wesley Blanchard. Three Gore Clan Rampagers, a Rancor. Four, four Idol on the Great Rebels, three Ancient Grudge, two Light Trickery, two Rending Volley. Not a great sideboard against Burn. No, if, if you're on the play, the Idol ones might actually be good. And I could also see Rampager being good. I feel like the pump spells in this matchup are the things that allow you to kill before the Burn deck can kill you. Okay. Well, he doesn't have great options, but he is sideboarding pretty quickly, so we'll probably take him see an play, probably see him take an aggressive approach. For Hawk, he's got two Redding Volleys, three Path Exiles, two Relic Progenitus, two Deflecting Palms, three Core Firewalkers, and then three Destructive Revelry. Yeah, I've, I feel like both these players want ways to kind of turn the race in their favor, so Deflecting Palm might be a card that we see Hawk go to, just because you stop a Tarmogoyf or maybe even like a Vexing Devil, maybe a big Experiment one, like that's a big swing. Okay, well... Not a lot of options here for both players. They're going to sideboard shuffle up pretty quickly. In the meantime, we're going to discuss, excuse me, 
Grand Prix Atlanta, two weeks away is that tournament. We're hoping to see you guys there. And if you're not familiar with all the information, we have it for you right now. On November 13th through 15th, StarStateGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Atlanta. And no matter how you're looking to experience the event, we've got you covered. Grand Prix Atlanta's main event experience is for players wanting to put their battle for Zendikar Limited skills to the test against thousands of other competitors, and hopefully qualify for Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch. Fans who choose this experience will receive a promotional foil crystal brand, a StarCityGames.com deck box, a voucher for one month of StarCityGames.com premium, a set of SEG Live trading cards, and six Battle for Zendikar booster packs from which to build your deck. And since all main event competitors will be cracking those packs hoping to discover one of Battle for Zendikar's highly elusive Zendikar expeditions, we'll be providing someone to aid in your search. And it appears as if she's already begun looking. Choose Grand Prix Atlanta's main event experience and you'll also receive this exclusive playmat featuring Battle for Zendikar's Seek the Wilds. Want to get your hands on that sweet playmat, but prefer to play in lots of side events instead? No problem. Fans who choose Grand Prix Atlanta's 3-day infinite challenge experience receive the exclusive Seek the Wilds playmat, a commemorative badge and lanyard, a voucher for one month of StarCityGames.com Premium, a set of SCG Live trading cards, the ability to pick up your registration rewards at any time, plus entry into all challenge events, including sealed, on all three days. Of course, many Magic the Gathering fans prefer playing with 100-card decks, and Friday's release of five all-new Commander 2015 decks makes Grand Prix Atlanta the perfect place to host the world's first-ever celebration of the Commander format. Choose Grand Prix Atlanta's three-day Commander celebration experience and receive the exclusive Seek the Wilds playmat eight four-player Commander On-Demand event vouchers, entry into all six Swiss format Commander events taking place that weekend, a digital copy of the complete Commander by Benny Smith and MJ Scott, a voucher for one month of StarCityGames.com Premium, a set of SCG Live trading cards, a commemorative badge and lanyard featuring Xur the Enchanter, the ability to pick up your registration rewards at any time, plus exclusive access to the Command Zone, a designated area in which Commander Celebration badge holders will be able to play their favorite format alongside some of the Commander community's most notable personalities. You've chosen Grand Prix Atlanta's main event, 3-Day Infinite Challenge Badge, or 3-Day Commander Celebration Experience, now upgraded to get your hands on even more registration rewards and benefits. For those playing in the main event, the Sealed Pool Registration Upgrade comes with a pre-registered Sealed Pool, the ability to pick up your registration rewards at any time, and a sleep-in special for those players with buys. But anyone can select a Premium Rewards Upgrade, which comes with everything included in the Sealed Pool Registration Upgrade, two free 8-player on-demand side event vouchers, an upgraded voucher good for one full year of SCG Premium, a set of foil SCG Live trading cards, plus a Seek the Wilds pin, Xur the Enchanter pin, and Xur the Enchanter playmat, all of which are exclusively available at Grand Prix Atlanta. Finally, there's the VIP Rewards Upgrade, which comes with everything included in the Premium Rewards Upgrade, along with a commemorative VIP badge and lanyard, StarCityGames.com water bottle, and access to Grand Prix Atlanta's exclusive VIP Lounge, featuring a VIP concierge, water stations with unlimited refills, phone electronics charging stations, an exclusive side event registration area, private pairings boards, and a viewing area for watching live coverage of the event. A VIP Rewards Upgrade is also the only way to get your hands on a set of five Grand Prix Atlanta exclusive Commander 2015 pins, but act fast as only 400 VIP Rewards Upgrades are available, and once they're gone, they're gone. Speaking of VIPs, check out some of the special guests who have already RSVP'd for Grand Prix Atlanta's Commander Celebration. SCG Commander Columnist and co-founder of the Commander format, Sheldon Mennery. SCG Commander Columnist and author of The Complete Commander, Benny Smith. Editor and producer of The Complete Commander and Grand Prix Atlanta's featured cosplayer, MJ Scott. Jonathan Suarez, Wes Wise, Stephen Green, Justin Parnell, and Danny West, SCG's Commander vs. Crew. Plus, Pete Venters, featured artist and illustrator of Xur the Enchanter. Magic the Gathering artist Clint Keerley, Winona Nelson, Anthony Palumbo, and Jason Engel will also be joining us at Grand Prix Atlanta, but it doesn't stop there. StarCityGames.com run Grand Prix always feature a special guest of honor, and Grand Prix Atlanta is no exception. Please join us in welcoming Grand Prix Atlanta's guest of honor, all the way from England, John Avon. From 5 to 7 p.m. on Friday, attendees will also have a chance to meet and greet SCG Live broadcasters Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan. However, if you can't make it to the event, Cedric, Patrick, and the rest of the SCG Live crew will bring the event to you. Live coverage of Grand Prix Atlanta begins Saturday morning at scglive.com. Between a massive main event spotlight in the Battle for Zendikar Limited format, the world's first ever celebration of the Commander format, a stacked guest list including guest of honor John Avon, live coverage courtesy of Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, and the SCG Live crew, and more exclusive registration rewards and benefits than we've ever offered before, Grand Prix Atlanta is sure to be one of the can't-miss magic events of the year. Join the discussion using the hashtag GPAtlanta and choose your experience today at StarCityGames.com slash GPAtlanta. 
November 13th through the 15th, Grand Prix Atlanta. You can go and beat Jerry Thompson while you're there. Not happening. It's my format, man. I'm calling it. Oh, it's Jerry Thompson sealed. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm going to lose playing for top eight of that Grand Prix, too. That'll be four. Be four well, in a row, right? Oh, yeah. But, well, no, because I'm going to play Seattle in the meantime. All right, so five. <laughs> Hopefully. So five, yeah, I'm just predicting five, then. I'd, I'm fine with that, honestly. <laughs> What if Foothill is going to find a stomping ground here? Blanchard going to get off to an aggressive start, falling down to 17. He wants to get to the board early, and it'll be with experiment fun. Going to go back William Hawksway. Sure. What do we have here for William? It's an aired Mesa, down to 19. We'll see if it'll be 17 or not. Won't just be 19. Basic Mountain is the weapon of choice here for Hawk. I've seen this a lot, the fetch for Basic Mountain. Yeah. I think... Pro Tour cons of, or Pro Tour Favorite Forged, sorry. When the burn deck starts showing up a bunch, they kind of had free reign, just be like, get a Sacred Foundry, get a Stomping Ground. I don't really care. There's just Splinter Twin everywhere. Your life total doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You know, now it's just like, all right, got to be a little careful. You got to slow down a little bit. This, this guy's trying to kill me on turn three with damage. Yeah, everyone is, apparently. Lightning Bolt was the reveal off a of Goblin Guide. Blanche already down to 15. He's going to sacrifice a wood of foothills. He's going to fall down to 14. What land is he going to get, though? That's the question. Is it Ravnica or is it basic? Mountain. I'm guessing mountain. Ooh. Wrong. It's a mountain. It, it's You're right. <laughs> it's fetchable. You are right. Sacred Foundry is going to bring Blanchard down to 12. That is not very much against a burn deck. He is going to have to really bring the heat here. There's the ape. Going to trigger experiment one. Oh, uh, he has the Nicodal in hand, so that makes sense. I'm not sure if two life is worth having the extra points, but yeah, you can still make experiment one a 3-3. I, th I mean, the race is on. It is. Hawk is going to have to have a pretty good hand. Yeah, see, this is what we were talking about. Searing Blaze is not actually going to clear the way for Goblin Guide this turn. So what is Goblin Guide really doing? Yep. It was good for two damage. Yeah, but we're not playing Shocks. Shock is not something this burn deck would be interested in. What's the Mr. Hawk going to search up? He's going by some things. He might be looking for another mountain. He is. Okay. Both mountains out of the deck now. Swift Spear, and Lava Spike. Blanchard down to nine. But if I'm Wesley, I'm pretty happy that's his turn. Yeah, I mean, your creatures are just so big. Now, this is interesting because he wants to get in with everybody. I think he has to get in with everybody. My assumption is he's got some sort of nice follow-up, but... Well, he does have a Tarkus Command. It's one short. Yep. But he does have the lightning bolt also. Mm -hmm. So if he drew a land, could be it. But gonna see a block. Let's be five damage that comes through. I think if, you, if you're Wesley and you go for the Tarkus command here, you could just die. It's, it's like pretty likely that you just die. I mean, you're at nine. And a Swiss Spear will still be on the battlefield. Right. So I think I would just be content to deal the five damage, take out the Swiss Spear, and hope my opponent didn't have like three Lava Spikes. Yeah. that's. They hope they don't have three one mana burn spells. Right. Yeah. La lava Spike or Lightning Bolt. Yeah. Experiment one. Well, that's fine. Now now you have this thing that can potentially block. You don't necessarily need to use the lightning bolt right now. I would love a chump block right now. You would chump with experiment fun? Yeah, if, if that Swiss Spear comes in, I'd, I'd chump immediately. No, well, he's going to take that Swiss Spear out with a bolt. Board's clear. Path to exile the draw. Are there enough burn spells to get the job done here for William Hawk? He's facing down a pretty big army here from Wesley Blanchard. Yeah, these are definitely the games where I feel like Zoo has the advantage. Yeah. And he went fetch shock, fetch shock. Mm -hmm. He did not mess around. He got to the board fast.
Arid Mesa. Lava spike puts you to six. <laughs> since since William thought for so long, I would not be all that scared about dying that turn. Okay. But like, if he just untapped Drew, slammed third lane, and lava spiked me, I'd be like, uh oh. Yeah, I'm probably dead. <laughs> Atarka's command. Yep, that's gonna do it. Wesley Blanchard's gonna win game number two here against William Hawk. Zoo, burn, getting ready for game number three. Atarkas Command is like the best aggressive card printed in maybe the last 10 years. It's a silly magic card. It really is. It's a, it deals so much damage. It's absolutely silly. Both players going to take a look at their sideboards again. Well, William Hawk doesn't look to appear to be looking at anything. I think he's happy. <laughs> it's like, I know what I have to do. Yeah, I have to play first game three. Stoic as ever. Yeah. He might go back. Yeah, he's going to go back to the drawing board now. Get a little look at things. Had he to think about it a little bit first. Two running volleys, three pass, two relic progenitors, two deflecting palms, three core firewalkers, three destructive revelries. Those are your options. We saw a path in that particular game. Don't know how many he's brought in. Might have the palms in there too. Those seem to be the best options, at least in my opinion. I definitely agree with that assessment. There's not really a whole lot you can work with. And it's it might just be a matter of shaving the worst burn spells in your deck. Three Gorkland Rampagers. A Rancor, four Ilan the Great Revel, three Ancient Grudge, two Electricery, two Rending Volley here from Blanchard. Again, not a ton. I mean, I do like Gorkland, Rampager, and Rancor to speed things up. Eidolon is okay, though I don't like Eidolon on the draw very much. Yeah, me either. And the Electricery, not for this matchup. I wonder what matchup Electricery is for. Affinity? Yeah, Affinity. Affinity and Infect. Oh, probably. Infect too, sure. Yeah. It's a nice one. We don't see much of that card. No, not really, but it is a pretty nice one. Game three, game three, last one of the day. Someone's out of here with $5,000, 25 Open Series points, invite to our Season 4 Invitational. We'll take a look at our Season 4 schedule here as well, so you guys can get an idea where we're going to be the next couple of weekends. Of course, we're here in Dallas-Fort Worth right now. Next weekend, Open Series is coming to Philadelphia. A little standard action. We haven't had standard on the Open Series for a little while, so Patrick Sullivan, Matthias Hutton, they'll be bringing you that all weekend long. Then we got that Grand Prix in Atlanta. You just found out more information about that, but starcitygames.com slash Atlanta. You can take care of your pre-registration right now. It's going to be a lot of fun that weekend. Kansas City for a standard Open Series, number 20th, 21st and 22nd, excuse me. Legacy Open Series, New Jersey. November 28th and the 29th. I'll be joined by Patrick, of course. We'll have a standard open series in Denver. First time back there in a couple of years. Also the last time to get that Hop and Rabbit Master play mat, December 5th and the 6th. Then that Season 4 Invitational, Standard and Modern with a standard top eight and the standard open series, December 11th through the 13th. Myself, Patrick Sullivan, Matthias Hunt, and the three of us will be bringing you the Players' Championship, Roanoke, Virginia, at the Star City Game Center, December 19th and the 20th. i got to figure out who the rest of the people are going to be qualified for that thing. Brad Nelson going to try to defend the title. I want to play in that thing at some point. We'd love to have you. It's fun. Looked like a lot of fun. It's an intense tournament, man. Also, man, some of the games we covered that tournament were just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get 16 excellent players in the same room, force them to play Magic against each other in various formats, and yeah. some cool stuff's going to happen, I'm sure. Yeah. Some of the games we got, some of the metagaming that happened, too. Oh, I know. Joe Lissette not playing Miracles that weekend was <laughs> so unbelievable. Well, Brad cut the spell pierces in his sneak and show deck for fluster storms. That's not like an insane thing. Okay, I but didn't he know was that. he was just like there, there aren't going to be any permanents here. There's no weird stuff like no enchantress, no staring bridge, no Liliana's. I don't care about Jace. So okay. fl fluster storm is just better. It's like one of the things that you can do in that tournament. Yeah, I mean you can meta game in pretty sharp ways. That's what makes it so much fun. The best part is like. I see Joe at a lot of tournaments, obviously, because mm -hmm. he travels so much for the Open Series. And um, we have uh, we have conversations every now and again. He's talking about miracles, the changes he's been making and stuff like that. And I was just like, hey, what do you, what do you think about for the Players' Championship? He's like, I've been working on Reanimator for a little while, just trying to figure out when I'm supposed to break it out. Because he's thinking about breaking it out like at a Grand Prix or okay. something. When everyone's Because when you get paired into Joe, you just assume miracles. Right. So he was just like, I, I, I don't know when I'm going to break it out. I've been thinking about maybe trying to spike an Open Series with it. And he's like, I've been working so hard. got these gemstone caverns no one knows about. All this stuff. And he's just like, I think I'm going to do the Players' Championship. But I could be wrong, and it would be really bad. But <laughs> he went for it, uh, ended up making, a, making day two. It was, a, it was a lot of fun to watch him do it. Him and Kent Ketter played that day. Yep, I remember that. Bloodstained Meyer here from William Hawk with his burn deck. Sacred Foundry, does he have a one-drop? Yes, sir, it's a Goblin guy. He's got a couple of them, actually. Stomping Ground gets to go to Wesley Blanchard's hand as we're underway here in game number three of the finals of our modern open here from Dallas. And there's the Vexing Devil. It's going to be a Kurt hit. This was something we said could happen. Yeah, the roadblock. 2-3.
real deal on defense. That's a lightning bolt. Real deal on offense. I think he's stuck on a one-lander. I do, too. Otherwise, he probably would have led with Monastery Swift Spear. Yeah. And now Hawkins has to pass the turn back. Oh, no. Stoic as ever, though. Yeah. Blanchard. He's got to be thrilled to see no land on the other side of the table. It looks like he's thinking windswept teeth, maybe thinking going down to 11. See how aggressive he wants to get here, though. Well, I think you have some amount of leeway with your opponent not having a second land. It's very unlikely that you're going to die in a flurry of burn spells. You know, it's going to be slow going unless Hawk finds a land immediately. Down to 13 from the Heath. How low do you go? We're going low. Sacred Foundry. Likely going to see a couple of one drops. Have yet to see a Burning Tree Emissary, though. Yeah, that's, a, that's the one that's a little surprising to me. I haven't seen that one come out yet, but we're going to see Ape and the Coddle. And over to William Hawk. <laughs> Rift Bolt on Suspend. Hawk is just passing. Boy, he needs to find a land. He needs to find it real soon. And at this point, it might be too late. Yeah. A couple copies of Flint Hoof Bore in hand. A Tarkus Command, Lightning Bolt. Yep. It's a good hand here from Blanchard. Yeah. He's got basically everything he could ever want. Except for four Burning Tree Emissaries. You yeah, know. that's about it. It's the only thing missing. Makes everything better. It's been a couple of years since we've seen Burning Tree Emissary draws. See how Wesley wants to sequence things, because he can have a turn that's pretty straightforward and simple of just playing Flint Hoof Boar and giving it haste and getting in the red zone. We could also see maybe Flint Hoof Boar plus Vexing Devil. Mm -hmm. Use a fetch land search of a mountain, go down to a go down to ten. It looks like we're gonna see an attack here. No Flint Hoof Boar plus haste. Yeah, might just be interested in playing that on defense. Maybe even keeping open Lightning Bolt. Or just, yeah, playing Stomping Ground Tapped. Now that's interesting. Rift Bolt's going to come off his pen. Where is it going? I think Wesley's just setting up for the kill next turn. Okay. It's going to go towards the Flint Hoof board. Time to draw. Is it land number two here for William Hawk? It is not. Here comes Goblin Guy. Trigger. Ooh, Tarkus Command. I might be seeing two of those on the next turn. Mm -hmm. Swiss Spear on defense. Pass the turn back. Blanchard's going to draw Tarkus Command. This one could be over this turn. He'll draw very quickly. He's also got a lightning bolt in the grip. He's going to analyze some things. This could be the last turn of the tournament. And with him walking out of here, the victor does not want to make a mistake if that's the case. Yeah, it doesn't look like he can get through for lethal this turn, but he is definitely well set up for winning on the next turn. A lot of cards in hand. Vexing Devil, Flint of Boar. Hawk had a pretty high life total still, though, at 12. Yeah, it's, step one is figuring out if you can win this turn. Yep. If not, figure out how to not die on your next turn, or on William's next turn. Yeah, just got to figure out the best way, as you said. Just Yeah, make sure you don't die. If you can win this turn, cool. If you can't, Okay, but don't die on the turn on, on the following turn. Swiss Spear is going to jump in front of the coddle. So 
So with this attack, if William did not block, Wes had lethal. Mm -hmm. I think he was expecting a block, but he still, you know, played it in such a way that he would give William the chance to make a potential mistake. Vexy. Is he going to pay for a life? Not sure he can. I think at this point, he just wants to chump block, basically, and oh. soak up damage to the point where maybe he can fire off enough lethal burn spells. If William Hawk takes four, he's dead. Bolt plus Darkus come in. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, that's in. And there's Flinthoof Boar. So two blockers against the Goblin Guide. I think it's safe to say that that's out of the equation. The draw is a stomping ground. That second land, real late to this party. I think it might be too late now. Yeah, the game looked pretty bleak for William after he missed his second land drop, and every turn it got progressively worse. And now I think there's just no coming back from this. Yeah, he's gonna extend the hand, concede the game, and we have a champion here in Dallas. It is our zoo player on the left. It is Wesley Blanchard gonna win this tournament with Kurt Apes and Vexing Devils and Wild Nacatles. He is your champion here at SCG DFW. Congratulations to him. Yeah, very impressive showing from both of these zoo decks and just, you know, aggressive strategies in general, like William Hawk being the first seed, playing Burn. No Atarka's Command in his main deck. Yep. Or in his 75 at all. It went without that, went to Skull Clamp, or excuse me, went to Skull Crack instead. Boros Charm, Searing Blazes, mostly a red-white burn deck, green splash in the sideboard for William Hawk. Number one overall seed. A heck of a run here, but all he can do is shrug his shoulders. Was not able to get the job done. It's Wesley Blanchard that everyone's clapping for here in the Dallas, excuse me, the Fort Worth Convention Center. He's your champion.